Wait, does anybody have a name? Testing, one, two, three. Anybody out there? Hello? You out there, Liang? Okay, I'll wait another minute or two in case uh, somebody logs on. First thing I want to do today is review the Unit 10 lesson test that we did last Friday. Okay, so let's look at Part A, Vocabulary. And if you can look at and please read the first sentence to me. So Sydney is the oldest and largest city in Australia. Okay, please look at the next sentence. This has three words in there. Okay, can you please read that sentence out aloud, please? Okay, it is a popular tourist destination with its beautiful harbour, historical buildings and cosmopolitan culture. Okay, look at the next sentence. Again, there are two, two words that you need to put in there. Two of the words from the box. Please read out loud. Okay, the people are very friendly and helpful, and the city is generally safe to walk around even at night. Okay, the next sentence is one, one word. Please read out loud. You can go sightseeing and shopping during the day, and why not go dancing? in the great discos in the evening. And the final sentence. Okay, if you please read. Read out loud. And don't miss the two most famous landmarks. Sydney Opera House and Sydney Harbour Bridge. Okay, great. I hope you did well on that test. Uh, part B, each sentence has one mistake. Again, we're using colour words, uh, adjectives, and they always come before the noun, okay? So number, part B, number 11, it's a light blue T-shirt. Number 12, they are red bags. 13, it's a dark green towel. 14, they are small silver key rings. 15, it's a light brown teddy bear. Okay, for part C in grammar, we looked at uh, comparatives and superlatives. Okay, number 16, Please read the answer to yourself out loud, please. Okay. Okay. And your answer, of course, should be, this picture is more expensive than that one. 17, okay. again, please read out loud. 17, this is the cheapest one. 
18. Can you please read out aloud? I think Cape Town is the most beautiful city in South Africa. Number 19. Hmm. Which city is bigger? Lisbon or New York? Which city is smaller? So your answer is Lisbon is smaller than New York. Number 20. Think of Mount Everest. Okay, please read out aloud. What is the highest mountain in the world? Number 21. <laughs> okay, your answer. Okay, it's usually colder than this in the winter. 22. Please read the sentence out aloud. Sydney, Sydney Opera House it is one of the most famous landmarks in Australia. Uh, and 23, please read that sentence out aloud. And your answer, of course, what's the best time to visit Australia? Uh, part D, quickly go through this. This is fairly easy, number 24. In the library, you must or mustn't speak loudly. What's your answer? Yes, you mustn't speak loudly in the library. 25, smoke in a restaurant. You mustn't smoke in the restaurant. In the hospital, with your phone, you must turn off your mobile phone in the hospital. 27. Okay. You must stop when the traffic lights are red. And okay. when the traffic lights are green, yeah, you should go. But look first. Look left and right and left again. Okay. Part E. Okay, we we'll change the sentences. So they have the same meaning as the original sentence. So the first one, 28, it's necessary to be quiet. Change that using you and must. So your answer is, you must be quiet. 29, it's not necessary for you to pay until the end using the word needn't, which is a shortened form of need not. Okay. So you needn't pay until the end. Okay. Over page, page 30. You are not allowed to drink and drive. Using the word mustn't. Again, shorten for must not. You must not drink and drive. Okay. 31, you have to wear a seatbelt. Why do you think you have to wear a seatbelt? And perhaps in case you have an accident, it will stop you hitting the windscreen, stop you getting hurt, or lessen the chances of you getting hurt. So 31, you must wear a seatbelt. Okay, look at it's the question, part F. Okay, one word for each sentence, number 32, very simple, you are out shopping. Shop assistant comes up to you, what does the shop assistant say? Can I help you? Again, you are out shopping, so number 33. And you want some help from a shop assistant. 
What do you ask? Excuse me, how much are these? How much are these? If it's a t-shirt, you would say, how much is this? A pair of shoes or a pair of jeans, you would say, how much are these? Number 35, do you have any blue ones? Number 36, the shop assistant might say to you, would you like anything else? Would you like anything else? Would you like anything more? Okay. Would you like anything else? You could answer using number 37. No thanks, that's all. That's all I want, that's all I need. That's all, thank you very much. Uh, number 38, you might ask a shop assistant a question. Do you have this T-shirt in a bigger size? The shop assistant. Sister might say, hmm, I don't know. I'll find out for you. Okay. 39. I no. I'm only black or green. Hmm, what do you think? Answer to that one. No. I'm only there should be no. I only have black or green, not I'm. Yeah. Number forty. Can I help you? Oh, no, thanks. I'm just looking, yeah, like uh, window shopping. Okay. Uh, if you buy something, okay, how much is it? Hmm, it's, it's 20 pounds. Do you want it? Certainly, that's 20 pounds. Okay, that's a review from the Unit 10 Lesson Test. Okay, today I'd also like to review Monday's lesson. Okay, so the opposite words, we looked at some opposites. Okay, some opposite words. So what is the opposite of part-time? There is, of course, full time. I work full time as a teacher. I work part time as a tutor. Badly paid. Hmm. What is the opposite of badly paid? Answer of badly paid will be, of course, well paid. Oh, I only get one dollar per hour. I'm badly paid. Your friend might say, oh, I get twenty dollars an hour. I am well paid. Okay. Word temporary. I am only working temporary. My work is only temporary, which is only for a short time. Permanent is the opposite. Okay. And the opposite of unemployed means not working. I am unemployed because there are no tourists here. I am unemployed because of the coronavirus. There is no business. The opposite of unemployed is employed.
So uh, unemployed, no job, employed, have a job. Okay, so if you're unemployed, you don't have a job. If you are employed, you have a job. Okay. Okay, do, do you all do the opposites worksheet? Opposites worksheet. And we'll quickly review that. The opposite, of course, is of bad is good. Opposite of bottom is top. Okay. So this is the bottom. This is the top. Yeah. This is the bottom of the bottle. This is the top of the bottle. Cold, easy one. What is the opposite of cold? Oh, it's, it's hot. Yeah. Dry. Oh, yeah. it's very dry here in Siem Reap at the moment. But in maybe two months, it will be very wet. Yeah. Dry, wet. Fast. Yeah. The leopard is very fast. The tortoise is very slow. Happy, what is the opposite of happy? <laughs> Sad, of course. High, yeah. high voice, low, low voice. Long, short. This one, right, you are right, you are right, I was wrong, okay, so right and wrong. This is the right answer, yeah. that is the wrong answer. And the last one is to sit, and the opposite of course is stand. So today, we'll have a look at Unit 10B. Yeah? And we're going to continue the future of work. So just think about this question. Uh, what is your future? What is your future? So if you're reviewing part, uh, part one, 11B, uh, the speaking from yesterday, do you agree or disagree with sentence number one? It is normal to change jobs many times. Do you agree, disagree, My opinion is it is normal to change jobs many times. So I agree. Two, it is easy to get a job in my country. What do you think? Is it easy to get a job in Cambodia? I don't know. In Australia, I don't know. Number three, many people work at home in my country. Do you agree? Disagree? Or don't know? I think now with coronavirus, I would agree that many people work at home in my country. Okay, number four, you must know how to use a computer to get a job. Uh, I think that depends 
on what type of job you do. But yes, most jobs, I think you need, you need to know how to use a computer. Some form of computer. You know, even a cashier needs to know how to operate the most, most cash registers are computer operated or some form of a computer. Most cell phones these days uh, are like a mini computer. So yes, I think it's most people, you must know how to use a computer, okay? So, okay, the reading was about the future work, okay? So we'll just quickly review that. Okay, the reading was a book about the future of work in Britain. True or false? Yeah, true. So please read through that. True or false? You could have done that yesterday. And the vocabulary describing work. Yeah. Look at page 115 in your book and just review describing work. Number two. So there is a temporary job at the school. They are looking for a person to work from February to July. Number two, she has a part-time job in the bank. She only works Tuesdays and Thursdays. Number three, he hates his job. It's dirty, dangerous, and badly paid. He never has any money. Excuse me, drop my pen. And number four, I'm unemployed at the moment. I can't find a job. Yeah. So that's re review, uh, reviewing from yesterday. Okay, so future jobs, future jobs. I'm just going to pause this for a second. Hello, back again. We're just going to quickly review page 115. And we talked about will. Grammar predictions with the words will or won't. Okay. So if you look at grammar number one, page 55, public transport like buses. What do you think? They won't use petrol. They use, they'll work on electricity. Yeah. Number two, hmm, what do you think? A computer, Computer will control everything in your house. Lights, fridge, television, etc. Number three. Hello. Number three, every car will have a computer with satellite technology. Number four. There will be more problems with bad meat and people will be ill. Number five, people won't cook by prepared food. Okay? Mm, people won't cook by food. So these are some predictions for the future. Number six, the last one. 
people won't live in tall buildings. They live underground. I don't know about that. Okay, on to the main part of today's lesson. Main, yeah, main part of today's lesson. And okay, I'm going to ask you some questions about your future. Okay. And I want you to use the words, I'll or I won't. Okay. Be rich. Your answer will be, I'll be rich. Or it could be, I won't be rich. This one, be happy. Be happy. What's your answer to that? I'll be happy or I won't be happy. I'll be sad. Have a job. Okay. What is your answer to that? I'll have a job or I won't have a job. I think if you study hard, continue with your English studies, you will have a job. You will have a good job and you will be happy and you will be healthy. Okay. I will be married. Or I won't be married. I think in Cambodia, most people will be married. Have children. What's your answer to that? I will have children or I won't have children. Number six, live in another country. The answer for me, of course, is I will live in another country. I have lived in several other countries. The last one, be famous. Will you be famous? Maybe a famous dancer, a famous scientist, a famous pilot. Many things you can be famous in. Okay, I want you to ask your friend, your friends or a family member, some, some funny, funny examples. Okay. Um, so for example, um, give a prompt like, live in a castle, live in a castle. I'll live in a castle, or I won't live in a castle. Speak perfect English. I'll speak perfect English. Have a pet tiger. I won't have a pet tiger. Go on a holiday every month. I won't go on a holiday every month. I'd like to go on a holiday every month. Huh? What about get married to a film star? Uh, I won't get married to a film star. No, I don't think so. Eat kimchi for breakfast. I will eat kimchi for breakfast. Okay. So I want you to think up some, some funny sentences and ask your friends. Just give them the prompts. So give them the sentence like live in a castle and they have to answer I will live in a castle or I won't live in a castle. 
eat kimchi for breakfast? You have to answer, I will eat kimchi for breakfast or I won't eat kimchi for breakfast. Okay, for part B, again, that's uh, number four, is working in pairs and just listen to those prompts that I gave you, those sentences, and ask your friends. Okay. The next thing I'd like you to do is the speaking part. So speaking number one, do the My Future Working Life quiz. So the title is My Future Working Life. It says, in 10 years, I'll have a good job. I'll have an okay job. I'll have no job. So I want you to do that quiz for me, please. would be your answer to number one. So a full sentence answer would be, in 10 years, I'll have a good job. Or you could even say, in 10 years, I'll have a great job. Or I'll have a fantastic job. Or I'll have a job that I am very happy doing. So these are some other answers you can think of, okay? Number two, in 10 years, I'll work. So please, think of your answer and give a full sentence answer. So in 10 years, I'll work not many hours. That would be my, my answer. Uh, in 10 years, number three, in 10 years work will be the most important part of my life. In 10 years work will be very important or in 10 years, work will not be important in my life. Yeah. So remember to use full sentences in your answers. Okay. So when you're doing the quiz, yeah, I'd like you to uh, write your answers in your notebook in full sentence, in full sentences, please. So again, again example number one, in 10 years, I'll have a good job. If you want to add extra to that, that's great. I'll have a good job and be very happy working. Okay. If you get a chance, look at number two, okay? So you work in pairs or talk to a friend or parent or your brother or sister and tell about your future life, about your future working life, what you want to do, what you what you will be doing. Okay. Okay, for homework, okay, I'd like you to Look at your workbooks and make sure you have finished page 55. Okay, page 55 in your workbook. And also from unit 10, uh, the reading section on pages 82 and 83. That's from unit 10. Okay. So homework, uh, finish off page 55 your workbook and also make sure you have finished pages 82 and 
83, which is the reading section for Unit 10. Okay. In your lesson plan, uh, I've included a worksheet about the flu, which is very similar to coronavirus. It is a, the flu is a virus. Okay. So please read that. And in part 11C, uh, you will be studying about living a healthy lifestyle. What things do you do to live a healthy lifestyle? An example might be, oh, drink plenty of water. Might be, yeah. sleep well, go to bed early. Yeah, so there's some examples to think about. I also put in a worksheet, which will help you doing collocations. Yeah, collocations are just words that go together. Yeah. An example of words that go together, make friends, yeah. do my homework. Yeah. Make a sandwich. So they're just words that go together to make perfect English sentence, okay? So please read through that and complete that for your homework. And that will be all for today. I hope you're all well and happy and hope to see you back at school as soon as the coronavirus clears up. Okay, everybody. Hope you're all well. Have a nice day.